Well, hello fabrication fans. Uh, I get a lot of comments about uh, not being able to weld, not being able to bend, uh, hesitation about jumping into fabrication. So I thought I'd take a hot minute, talk to you guys about how I got comfortable with fabrication enough to build some incredibly fast and cool machines. Now, step one is just start. Um, you can look up all the information you want on YouTube. You can read all the forms you want. But until you actually get your hands dirty, your learning curve is going to be very long. Uh, once you start messing with this stuff, that learning curve gets a lot shorter and shorter as you gain experience. You can't gain experience by watching somebody do something. Number two, the right tools. Uh, there's a lot of guys and myself included that look to get inexpensive tools. Think of it like this. If you're building a house, you're not going to get a rubber hammer to drive the nails. Sure, it would work. It's going to wear the hammer out. It's going to be difficult. It's going to take you a long time to build a house, and it's going to be incredibly frustrating. Buying the correct tools will increase your success rate. It will save you a lot of time and energy, and it'll save you money in the long run because you're going to end up getting the right tools. This is firsthand experience. So sit back, relax. I'm going to walk you through fabricating, uh, welding, bending, notching, and, and how to get your confidence up so that you can tackle an awesome project like this. So let's talk about fabricating. Fabricating is 90% design and 10% execution or build. It takes a long time to design something like this around the CLR or centerline radius of a bend, the way these all come together, the cross members, the space to put an engine, uh, the space to have a rear end, driver seating and ergonomics, uh, even the dashboard. And on top of that, making sure it's all strong enough to where if you get in an accident, it's not going to all fall apart to where it's not based on how well you can weld, but how the tubes are put together, kind of like a bridge. Component spacing, how they all line up, that is 90% of fabrication. So if you are new to fabrication or new to building, definitely buy plans or something where you can just follow the recipe to build something versus trying to design it yourself. Um, if you are good with CAD, Design something, build it, try it out. If it works, you're well on your way. Now, if you are following plans, it is as easy as following a recipe. It's as easy as cooking. You're just following instructions. You're not creating anything. Uh, you're not starting with a blank canvas. You are starting with something that tells you exactly how to build something. So, in my plans or other sets of plans, you will get instructions. So as far as bending, it gives you the tube length, it gives you where to bend the tube, and how much to bend that tube. It's that easy. Now, I use a Rogue Fab Bender, and I use this specifically for that reason. I follow my own instructions, I design it, print it out, and then I just build it like anybody else is gonna build it. I don't use the CAD, for the building process, I use the plans. So I just cut it to the length. Uh, it's marked out where to bend the tube. I take one of Rogue Fab's handy dandy bending blocks. I put it on the tube where it says to, and then I bend it to the degree required. Now, how I design my chassis is that there is some room for error. Uh, I've had tubes as far off as two degrees, which on a Rogue Fab bender is a lot. I had to do it on purpose. Usually, I can get bends within a tenth of a degree easily, which is why I use this bender. It's a vertical bender. You know exactly the angle of the tube when it comes out of the machine, so you know if it matches your instructions. Now, once you bend, I think it's 22 pieces in my plans, you are ready to assemble the chassis. And assembly is the same thing. It's just following the plans. You're not creating. You're not coming up with this stuff, you're just putting it where the plans tell you to put it, which makes fabrication so much easier.
Now, the awesome guys at Rogue Fab who are well in touch with the community of builders, that's why they're so awesome, uh, have actually made it easier for you. If you want to build one of these carts, they have a KJ Racing Cross Cart Builders Package where it gives you everything you need in a discounted package to build one of these. I love those guys so much. They are so awesome. So next on the list is notching. Um, you don't need a notcher, but like I said before, having the right tools makes it easy and even enjoyable to fabricate. So what I have here is a Rogue Fab notcher. Uh, this thing really opened up fabrication, made things a lot easier. Um, you can adjust the angle on it. You can adjust the offset up and down of your tubing so you can cut offset notches. And all in all, it's just easy, simple, and quick to use. Now, if you're working from plans, like I said before, versus trying to figure out how to notch tubes, it's as easy as following instructions. There is a cut wrapper that you literally cut out and tape to the end of the tube, and it gives you a guide exactly how to cut it and tells you the angle of where to cut it. So, so if it says cut it at one degree or 10 degrees or however many degrees, you just set it, line it up, and notch it. Now, you don't need a notcher when you have cut wrappers. It's good to have one, but you don't need one. You can just cut the tube out following the line, and it's that easy. If you follow the instructions correctly, all your tubing, all your fish mouths, everything just fits together. And that leads to welding, the big one. Let's tackle it. So I was just digging through my scrap bin looking for a couple pieces to show you about welding and I found my original test piece. Look at how ugly that is. This is how I practiced to learn welding was exactly this and I'll show you. So first, welder. You'll need a welder that can handle the metal that you're welding, obviously. So I use a 110 welder. Um, it's not 220 volts. Uh, I'd love to have one, but I'll tell you how I can get away with it. If you open the door of your welder, it gives you a chart of thickness that you can weld. Um, I'm using MIG. That was a huge upgrade and made welding a lot easier is when I stepped up to MIG full gas shield. If you look on here, 10 gauge steel, uh, which is 0.143 of an inch, is thicker than any metal I use. The wall thickness I use is 0 0.095, 0 0.083, and for the big pieces, 0 0.120. This is showing that you can easily it's like within the chart it's not even a multi-pass setup so it welds thin wall just fine even on 110 uh, gives you the feed uh, for the wire diameter you're using and the settings uh, once you get used to your welder uh, you'll put it on d for tubing and then for exhaust you'll turn it down and you'll adjust your feed to just how you like to weld now, let's get on to actual welding and the techniques I use. I am not a certified welder. Um, most DIY guys are just at their home welding the best they can. They go for strong joints, not pretty joints. And I'll show you how to do that. The certified welders hate my welds because they have been welding for years. Uh, they can make pretty welds and they can make strong welds. Uh, I can fly an airplane and I'm not going to judge them. For not being able to fly an airplane. So don't be too critical on your own welds. All you're doing is making sure that they are strong and I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, you'll want to get a vise and a couple pieces of scrap tubing. Uh, everything we're welding is going to be fish mouth, so these are cut in a fish mouth and basically I'm going to use these two tubes and I'm going to tack it and then I'm going to weld it. And that's practice. And I can pull it off and keep running up and down this. I can get my cutoff wheel and just cut the welds loose and then re weld it and keep trying. Now, obviously, you're going to want to prep your surfaces before you do final welding. This has been in my box.
but it's shielded gas, so it's going to serve the purpose for this demonstration. All right, so first you'll want to tack it in place. And tack's easy, just, just put metal where the tubing connects. Now, some confusion on welding is that this doesn't get secured until it cools. So tack it, hold it in place until the metal cools. Now I'm going to show you a bad weld. I'm going to turn the feed way down and I'm going to turn the temperature down to C. Max power is on D. So I don't have enough power, my feed's not fast enough, and I'm going to rush through this weld and you can see how bad it looks. So you can see that I wasn't penetrating the steel. It's basically just a surface weld, and it's not going to hold where the crap. So I'm going to turn it back up. I'm going to put my setting on D. I'm going to put my feed just above 4, and I'll retack it. Now, even just in the tack weld, you heard how much power was going through there. All right? Let's get another tack. So now, I'm at the proper setting. Um, it's better to start high and back off than it is to start low and have to recover a weld. So the secret of this is the pool, all right? You're gonna get a shiny red pool, and you're gonna pull from the pool, go back to the pool. Pull from the pool, go back to the pool. You want a nice, red, hot, penetrating heat to get both those pieces together. I'm not teaching you how to weld. I am showing you what I did to learn to have confidence in my welds. Okay? Here we go. Now, this is why the welders hate me. You see how big it is? But it's strong. This is just half of it. All right? And you can see I didn't rush through it. The professional welders can go fast so there's not a lot of weld in the joint. I go slow to make sure I get penetration. All right, so let's get into some good welding. Let's get a, a nice spot here where we can tack it on. Let's do a little tack. Don't rush through your weld. You want a nice red hot piece and you want to circle out of it and come back to it. Circle out of it and come back to it. And you're just going to drag your red fireball all the way across your weld. That's how you know you're getting penetration. If it turns yellow or white, it means it's starting to get too hot and that you should either speed up or use a lesser heat setting. So let's put a weld on here. So there you go. Now you can see my weld is a little bit big. It's a little bit wormy. Now this is where the professional welders get mad at me because it's not gorgeous. It's not sunk into the metal. Now this is years of experience that they're talking from. I'm a home DIY guy. So this weld is strong. The color's nice. There's a little bit of splatter, but that's because I didn't clean my tip. If your tip's not clean, you're going to start to get splatter like that. Is that going to affect your weld? No. You're just going to clean that up before you paint it. No big deal. So, a way to test your strength of your weld is to try to cut it loose. Get a hammer. Beat on it. Try to break it loose. If it breaks loose, try it again. Try it until it doesn't break loose. Now, if the tubing fails before the weld does, that means your welds are good. Now I'm going to try to rip this off. There we go. So you can see the tube is ripping off. 
my weld is stronger than the metal I'm welding to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this little tab off and show you gap welding. All right, so our pieces didn't line up exactly how we wanted it to. That is a pretty considerable gap. But if you're a home fabricator, you're probably going to run into some gaps. So let's get that on there and tack weld it. All right, so you can see we've got a hole here. The rest of it is pretty lined up and is going to be an easy weld. But we don't want to scrap a whole piece, but we want to seal this so that our, our strength is there. Now, the method I use is a crescent moon. That's what I call it. There's probably a professional name for it, but for this, I'll just call it the crescent moon. I'm basically going to take my wire and I'm going to run it in a crescent moon shape, stacking metal on top of itself until I get to the top. And I'm going to circle around the entire border and leave a small opening in the middle and just kind of swirl until I close it off. Now with how we're feeding this, that weld is going to end up being as thick as this tubing or thicker, making this stronger than the tube, which is what we want with welding. The only problem with this is that it gets the metal hot because you're dumping heat and heat into there and you might burn through. So take breaks, keep your, your ball red and not white. When you're white, it's starting to burn through. So you'll see me weld this up, do the crescent moon, and you'll see me take breaks to let it cool a little bit. Another fine adjustment for heat, especially with MIG, is how close the tip is to the metal. Now the most heat is gonna be when your tip's right against your weld, and you're gonna lose heat dramatically as you pull away. Now these are methods, okay? So let's, uh, let's fill this gap. I just let that cool and you have a gap weld. Now, obviously, you have to clean it up because you just dumped a whole bunch of metal in there. And it's not going to be pretty, but you're going to have a seal around your fish mouth and you're going to have an incredibly strong joint, which is the whole purpose of welding. Crack it loose. <laughs> There we go. So you can see that it ripped the metal off and this wasn't even fully cooled yet. And you can see that our gap weld is actually thicker than the tubing itself. So there's no way that gap weld is gonna break before the metal does. So I hope this boosts your confidence to get started on something like this. Uh, it takes some encouragement, uh, it takes some motivation, but most of all, it takes just getting started. Uh, there's days when I come out here and I've got a big task ahead of me and I'm just looking at it, thinking of all the things I need to do and getting intimidated at the big picture of it. If I just calm down and take it a step at a time, like step one is to bend a piece of tubing. 
Uh, you don't have to think about building an entire cart in one day. All you have to think about is each step of it and breaking it up. It makes it a lot easier to swallow. Now, I hope this doesn't sound like an infomercial for my buggies or Rogue Fab. I'm just speaking from my experiences with this. I'm a DIY guy, but my DIY is pretty okay. So I thought I would share it with you guys, uh, the steps I took to get the, the confidence to build crazy fast carts and basically anything I want. You have the right tools, you have the right motivation, and you have the correct amount of experience to get started, which doesn't have to be a lot of experience. You can do all of this. So keep tuning in. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.